Coming off the emotion of a one-point win over the GWS Giants, the Blues packed their bags for a trip to the Gold Coast with a Saturday night showdown on the cards. Carlton fell to the Suns in Melbourne only nine weeks earlier and is on a quest for redemption. Kept with 70 points last week. But that's Lord and Dustin. We've got to go and execute again, and this is the way we've got to execute. That's right now, Wittis. Let's go. A big game between the Suns and the Blues. And the ground's in magnificent condition. Pristine situation conditions wise as well. Not hot, not humid, but just a nice balmy evening here for football. And we're about to get underway. Cruiser to do battle with Wits. It favours Cruiser. The umpire doesn't recall it. Here's a chance at ground level for the Gold Coast Suns. Thomas will come around and does. And goals. Blues have got a couple. Blues come out firing and dominate the first half. Liam Jones proves unbeatable in his rebirth as a defender, blanketing dangerous forward Tom Lynch. When he has that opportunity, how well has Liam Jones done? Ed Kerno goes head to head with Suns superstar Gary Ablett, stifling his impact on the match. Ablett, who's had a fair beating tonight, takes a bit of a rest. As the game wears on, the Suns fight back taking the lead in the fourth quarter. Martin has put the Suns in front for the first time. But Carlton isn't done yet. Over the top to Kerno, back inside to Murphy, continues to run, got rid of the football at just the right time. Crips to Gibbs, a fumble, a recover, a stop, a shimmy, a shot at goal. Okay. It is an absolute pearler. Blues back in front. Boosted by a colossal performance from Bryce Gibbs, the Blues finish strongly running out 10-point winners. Will record their fifth win for the season. And if you're a Blues fan, you can celebrate tonight. We need to be more disciplined not to let teams come back at us, but the pleasing thing is we fought it out. We know a more team and system, but 43 touches, 14 contested, 10 tackles, two goals, give fuck pressure on the yeah. ball. Since helming the club for 14 games in 2015, John Barker's coaching development has been high priority for the Blues. In addition to his regular duties, Barker has taken an opportunity to cross codes, sitting in with coaches of the national soccer team. Oh, I've been lucky enough to um, spend a bit of time in, in, with the Socceroos um, in a couple of their camps, uh, been to a few of their games, and um, Andrew's 
being a Carlton person has been really uh, open with, with our access, so it was in there for Andrew's address, both pre-game and at half-time, and um, he's allowed me that access, and uh, really good experience. Um, as a coach, we're, we're pretty keen to, to continually look to improve and, and look outside the box. He's obviously at the forefront from a cultural point of view with his group and um, very similar to us in terms of the makeup of the Socceroos. Um, young group, uh, even the other night against Brazil, he was, he was keen to, uh, in the second half, blood a few of his younger players because he knows he's going to need to rely on them as the years go on in, in big competitions. So he wanted to keep bringing those guys in, giving them tastes of, of uh, you know, big time football and probably doesn't get much bigger than MCG against Brazil. Uh, mechanics of that and, and for me to be able to be front seat to all of that was a great experience. One of the great things about Bolts is he's keen for us to be innovative, being able to bring back ideas from, from other, not just the Socceroos but from other sports and, and um, from other experiences as a coach. Is a, is a good thing about our club and we've got a, a group that's keen to learn and keen to grow so great experience and um, really thankful to Ange for that. Round 14 pits Carlton against its season opening opposition, Richmond. After falling to the Tigers by 43 points in March, the Blues are hoping to carry their momentum to the MCG. Big crowd in and we're told plenty still trying to get in. It is Richmond and Carlton, both sides having excellent seasons. Carlton in many respects, like Melbourne, a real surprise packet this year. And they sit outside the eight, but one of them remain in the conversation, Richmond inside. And this should be something absolutely special. Huge, huge game. Richmond with a chance to consolidate a spot in the top eight and be a couple of games inside the eight at round 14. But Carlton won their last two games against the GWS Giants and the Gold Coast Suns in convincing fashion, built on a really well-organised, structured defensive unit. Contrast in style, Shorey. Going yep. to be interesting to watch. Near the goal square, Cruiser tries to work it to Cripps and then a little ball over the top from Cruiser. Might have gone all the way. I think it skipped on through. Now a long ball to the top of the square. The height remains as Bolt out muscles Asprey. Quick one over the top, Daisy Thomas, bang. Carlton leads at the first change, but Richmond takes control in the second. One out and deep here, Castagna was there. Well done, Silvani. Opportunity for the Tigers, Edward Wed. Went a little harder, might have been Smith in there. Advantage, and the advantage is paid. It was again Smith, the tackle, and Lambert kicks the goal. And the... the Blues leaders continue their consistency, but can't hold on as the gap widens in the second half. The game was not without positives for the young Carlton side, but a tight contest ultimately ends in a 26-point win for the yellow and black. Won five so far this year, seven last year. They'd, they'd love to get up closer to that you know, nine or ten wins. Not everything about wins really with Carlton this year, but they're getting so much from their top-end talent, they wouldn't want to fall away like they did last year. After the success of the inaugural Dads and Dudes Day in 2016, the fathers and family members of the playing group are again invited into the inner sanctum of the club to experience a day in the life of the players. This is all part of who we said we're going to be. We're going to be a club that's bound by blue. Well, bound by blue means bring people on this journey. Um, we know that uh, you're as close to this journey as we are sitting in here day to day because no doubt all the dads and do's ride the emotional roller coaster uh, with your sons and we want to bring you on the journey. This is a little gesture that we do as a club to say that you can come inside the footy club. One to say thank you, but what I will say, and I, I know that this is uh, a reflection of upbringing. We know that we're choosing people and developing people with grit, but there's a lot that happened as you're a young fella growing up and it's probably a reflection of the men sitting next to you today. So. Thanks for that. We know that grit and determination comes from the value of how you brought up. We've got some good characters in this group. Uh, you can see that in the footy, so thank you. Yeah, pretty special uh, for me and for my wife Cass. It's just been a, a long journey in so many things in life, but uh, we've got a few 
kids and their family as well, and you're sort of trying to get around all of them. And, uh, you know, it just feels pretty special that they're getting out together. And that hug last week was a nice one. <laughs> Daisy Thomas got a couple of sons to beat. Charlie Kerno comfortably to brother Ed. How about that? Brother to brother to goal. Great embrace. Look, it's one of those moments which parents like to see happening with all their kids and or with any kids particularly, but it is that sensitivity and empathy that's going on. Probably just uh, the respect they had for each other at that time as well as everyone else that was going on, everything else was going on in their lives. It's a good thing to see. Who's got a footy? Here we go. Is Ed coming out for a kick or not? You're not a bad kick, Charlie. Got to kick it at me, though. Good to see the 3,035 of you back, mate. They played yeah. together this year. Yeah. It's good. I thought they were going to go 32.5, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get it much nicer than this, can you? Oh, it's beautiful. It's how, you with, for it. how you going with the kicks, all right? Yeah, Getting a bit bad. of distance? <laughs> I told him the truth about your kicking the other day. I said, Charlie, listen to that man. <laughs> <laughs> so they've all got Kelpies now, haven't they? Yeah. They've all got them, yeah. All the pups? They've all got the pups all, all around. Yeah. yeah. Pretty Charlie, I rang Charlie last night and he said, oh, I'm out walking the dog. <laughs> He said, we've all got the Kelpies. <laughs> better go. I better get in there. Yeah. I can't wait to talk to you guys. <laughs> no way, give her, no way. Get it off, give her, get it off. Too slow, mate. <laughs> no way, Cruz. You're dreaming. You big oaf. <laughs> Where do you think you're going, Ed? Oh. <laughs> you got him. <laughs> <laughs> As the winter sun shines on the home of footy, the Blues prepare to take on the second-placed Adelaide Crows. The Round 15 match also marks the return of Irishman Kieran Sheehan, his first game in the Navy Blue since 2014 following an extensive injury layoff. Just about ready for the bounce here at the MCG. The Crows have had the wood over the Blues in recent times. They've won the last two, including a 60 point result in round 16 last year. Round 15 action from the MCG. Sensational winter's day it is as well. Perfect conditions for football. Crows don't take too long to show why they're the league's highest scoring team, kicking four unanswered goals in the opening 15 minutes. Eddie Betts, it's been a little bit lean of late, and he might be on the way now. The Blues, however, refuse to roll over. Quickly back in, Talia couldn't hang on, the Blues waiting for it. Gibbs likes to kick around the body at goal, bouncing ball is there! Carlton cuts the deficit to six points at half-time, getting the game back on its turn. Continue to go, slick handball by Cripps, got it to Kerridge with a long kick, saw the unguarded goal square, plenty of purchase on it. Look at that carry all the way from Sam Kerridge. After seesawing third and fourth quarters, the Blues take the lead for the first time all day. Kuno made the contest, knocked it away from Brown. Thomas arriving quickly on the scene, sending it long towards goal. The Blues are in front. Despite their efforts, the Crows hold firm, grinding out a two-goal win. The Blues gave a mighty challenge. Adelaide copped a huge scare, but the Crows prevail on the MCG. I was excited to get out there. Um, as I said, it's been a long time coming. Um, worked pretty hard with all the, the coaching staff and with the physio staff and high-performance staff and got my body to where it needed to be. And, um, just very grateful to get the opportunity to go out and play with the lads. So yeah, I had some difficult times. Um, look, I always say I'm very lucky to have a good support network around me. Um, it's like a second home to me out here at the footy club, and uh, I've been very fortunate with the people I've met, and they've got me through some very difficult times. Um, always wanted to be back playing AFL. That was always the goal. So um, yeah, I had my mind on that, and lucky enough got the opportunity today. Right, he's got him lined up. Josh, send Troy back and you go forward. Days off during the slog of the footy season are a treasured commodity. But this rest day sees Ed Kernow and Matthew Wright back on the footy field,
coaching one of AFL Victoria's diversity squads. The 10-week program has culminated in a carnival competition day with the Carlton pair lending their expertise to the next generation. I reckon seriously, if you're playing midfield, we need to have a stronger focus. That court, like we did that well that quarter, but they got a few easy goals because they were hammering over the top and getting them in the goal square because they had more numbers. The role evolved to be uh, basically an ambassador for the diversity Northern Corridor footy team and, and then uh, I kind of found out that it was a 10-week program. We get the opportunity to coach a young group of uh, talented footy players um, leading into this carnival today. So I thought Matty Wright um, would love to get involved as well. And I know he's a bit of a gun uh, working with, with young kids and, and youth. So it's kind of been good fun. We've been able to share responsibilities and coaching duties uh, for the last 10, 11 weeks. And they tied in pretty well. Ed's looking after the midfielders. I'm looking after the forwards. So. Um, all the challenges that come along with coaching, it's, um, it, it's been good, it's been a good learning experience for me but um, we've got to know a group of young men and you know, they're putting their head over the footy and having a good time. Ready, How you feeling man? I feel fine. Good start there. How are yeah, you going? Oh, <laughs> oh, I thought he was playing a free, ball it up yeah, yeah. surely. No, uh, it's not just about the football, it's more the challenge of getting guys from different backgrounds come together and showcase their talent and getting to see them grow and, um, and develop across that 10 week period is really rewarding. So um, yes, it's footy, but it's, it's a fair release from the, um, yeah, the strenuous kind of critical footy that we're used to during the week. <laughs> Can consume you at times, being in the AFL environment, so to get out of there and um, you know, still be involved in footy at, at some level, it's good. So. Um, you know, you, you come out here and you just try and transfer some of the stuff you're getting taught, but it's a bit more relaxed out here and um, they yeah, really enjoyed the challenge. Hey, great smother. It was a really good smother before. I'm clearing it, saved a goal. Another chance for atonement arrives in round 60 with a Sunday afternoon hit out against a young demon side hunting a finals berth. Carlton and Melbourne at the G earlier in the season. A pretty tight and somewhat spiteful game. Saw Melbourne get over the line by 13 points. A chance now for the Demons to make it nine wins on the season and be safely inside the top six. Whereas Carlton's need to keep their good recent form going. Well, it's a danger game for the D's BT and they come up against a very tricky opposition in Carlton. They win, they're in the top four, they lose, they could be outside the eight. As we get underway at the MCG, and it's Patrick Cripps with the opening clearance. He finds Kasmov in space, he's got Silvani, wide open inside 50, just needs it to sit, does Jack, can run to 30, he runs to 20, and he kicks a goal. The Blues fire early, holding off everything the Demons throw at them. He's got Hogan at the top of the square. One-on-one -on -one contest with Jones. Off the hands to Simpson. He's wrapped up. Here comes Liam Jones. The second quarter takes a turn for the worse, however, with Simon White and Patrick Cripps suffering significant injuries and Carlton's interchange bench cut to two. Cripps looking real sore for that contest. Jim Cripps doesn't look too comfortable, does he? Had five clearances already. Nice kick in eight seconds. Oh, hey, right behind the knee. The undermanned Blues battle hard. Youngsters and veterans alike shining for the club. But despite their efforts, they're left consigned to a heartbreaking loss. Like our supporters, uh, losing always hurts. Uh, obviously we want to win. There's no doubt about that. Um, we've been in uh, really tight games quite a bit this year. I sort of link the analogy to life. Um, sometimes those who have grown up with hardship, um, difficult circumstances, if they're determined and they reflect enough, they end up becoming quite successful in life. There's many a story like that. Um, and in a funny way, that's our footy club right now. Um, it's hard to see when you've got the emotion of just the week and the loss, but these experiences uh, sort of forge through adversity will, will pay us back in the long game. I've got no doubt about that.
careful, careful what you say, <laughs> Who's, I'm mic'd up. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. <laughs> Who's your favourite son? <laughs> No comment. No it's comment. Charlie. No comment. Charlie's my favourite. <laughs> no comment. I could actually wear these, but you wouldn't go public, would you? <laughs> Colours! Should have bought my hat. Careful what you say, Bolts. I'm all up, man. <laughs>